A very good morning to all of you and welcome back in our online classes of class 11th English. And in our last video, we have seen the uh, chapter from our supplementary reader snapshot Albert Einstein at school. And today we are going to continue our main reader Hornbill. And today we are going to deal with chapter number 4, Landscape of the Ch Soul. Okay, in 11th English. Chapter number four, Landscape of the Soul by, uh, by Natalie Travloy. And our author, Natalie Travloy, or sorry, yeah, Natalie Travloy is actually an art historian. She has traveled to different places and she is from Belgium, one of the European country. And actually, she came in limelight when she translated one of the work called As City of Dins by William Drumhill and she has an MA in history and uh, archaeology so our author speaks about landscape of the soul so in today's chapter my dear children the theme of the chapter is uh, you will find a little bit strange but it is all about on art First of all, painting. Uh, we will see two different narrations of the stories, uh, two different stories in which we will find that that stories are based on painting. One of the story is based on Chinese painting and another story is based on Western painting. A very small narration has been given in the chapter. So the one of the main theme of this chapter is what is the difference in the Eastern painting and in the Western paintings. So, uh, the difference you will find that uh, these Eastern or other Chinese painting are actually not fictional painting. Uh, they are related somewhere into uh, some supernatural source or rather you can call spiritual sources or rather this painting have a spiritual essence. And in uh, Western, they are really actually fiction story, uh, paintings, they are figurative, means uh, you can easily understand the painting once you understand what uh, the painter wants to uh, draw over there. So, there are definitely a figurative paintings are there, a hidden message, but there is no other uh, spiritual context or related to it. So, my dear children, uh, there will be the first theme is the difference in the Eastern and Western painting. And the second thing which we are going to read in this chapter is about concept of art brood. Uh, what is this art brood concept? Actually, all those art, uh, artists which are well trained, they are actually called as well trained artists or they are professionals in that particular field as this particular chapter talks about painting itself so if we take an example of a uh, painting artist so uh, some are well trained and some are immature um, we can call a naturalist or rather this art brood is all for the concept of art brood actually refer to all those untrained professional artists who are rather a creative uh, in their own field and they have a extraordinary piece of talent of art without any formal training in that particular art field so that is the concept of art brute which we are going to deal in this chapter okay before reading the chapter there are some expressions uh, given at the top of the chapter which needs to be dealt you should know it exact meaning so when it comes in the middle of the chapter uh, you are able to get it very easily. So first of all, note down its meaning so that when we read, because this chapter you will find a little bit strange, a uh, bit of uh, weirdness also you will find in its tone and language. But once you are thorough with the conceptualization, that's why in a simple term, I tried to make you, made you understand that what is the theme of the chapter. The very first theme is the, the narrator or the writer wants to tell us the difference in the type of paintings drawn by the artist uh, of the eastern countries and from the western countries. Okay, means Chinese painting have more of a spiritual relation in their painting. Paintings, whereas um, we can call the European paintings are more of figurative means 
दे हैव सम हिडन मैसेज बट इफ यू ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड यू आर एबल टू इजली अंडरस्टैंड नथिंग मोर हिडन और नथिंग मोर वी कैन कॉल सुपर नेचुरल और सुपर नेचुरल और स्पिरिचुअल पावर इज कनेक्टेड टू वर्ड्स इट ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी आर गोइंग टू लुक फॉरवर्ड टू दी दिस एक्सप्रेशन मीनिंग वॉट इज एनेकडोट ओके द फर्स्ट वन इज एनेकडोट so kindly write in your copies what does this mean it is a short amusing or interesting story a short amusing or interesting story about a about a real person real person or incident okay this is the meaning of anecdote now what is delicate realism delicate realism can you note it down in your copies it is a quality of art which makes it seems real quality of art which makes makes it seems real then figurative painting figurative painting figurative painting is again a metamorphic representation of representation of piece i am writing in short piece of art so here three expressions have been dealt lick very very clearly what is anecdote it is you can take it as a short and amusing story about a real person or an incident second is delicate realism is a quality of art which makes the things appear to be very real like we can call it as if somebody has drawn something and it appears to be like oh my god if somebody has drawn a painted a ship and it the ship appears that definitely the ship is floating on a uh see so if it appears so much real the painting we can call it an example of delicate realism which actually appears to be real but in realistic state it is not real then figurative painting it is a again a representation of a piece of art metamorphically means in on a contrary note okay now the third one which we are going to deal expression is illusion illusionistic likeliness okay the third meaning is illusionistic likeliness write down in your copies the third expression which we are going to study is about sorry fourth expression not third it is illusionistic sorry illusionistic likeliness it means an illusion which created to resemble which resembles something an illusion which is create which uh, an illusion created sorry which resembles something an illusion created which resembles something so actually this illusionistic is illusion okay it is not in real but it uh, it seems that it is uh, it is actually resembling something but it is not like that there is a some real resemblance or thing like that then conceptual space what is this conceptual space write it down i will make you understand conceptual space 
it means that relation with abstract uh, with an abstract representation relation with abstract representation you can write in more simpler form it means that uh, exist an idea though uh, though it is not physically present exist in idea no proof of physical existence okay this is meaning so illusion means you all understand means it is a creation something which is not actually there it has been created to believe that it is there but it is not there same conceptual place is relation with abstract representation means that thing is present in our ideas and thoughts but in uh, there is a no proof that it is physically existence is there of that particular thing that is called as conceptual space okay my dear children now let's begin the chapter i hope you are able to understand this expression meaning so that we are actually able to understand the chapter very properly a wonderful old tale is about uh, is told about the painter vudozi who lived in 8th 8th century so the chapter starts with a uh, with a tale or rather a story about a painter vudozi okay who lived in 8th century though so this painter actually lived in 8th century his last painting was a landscape commissioned by Tang Emperor Zhuang Zong to decorate the palace wall. So this Wu Jiazi was asked to make a painting of landscape. You know what is landscape? Landscape is where all the mountains, trees, all the natural beauties are there. That type of painting is called as landscape. So this emperor, the emperor name is Tang uh, Emperor Zhuang Zong, and he asked uh, this painter Wu Jiazi to actually make a painting which can be uh, used as a decorative piece on. the palace wall so what happened the master had had hidden his work behind a screen so only the emperor would see it for a long while the emperor admired the wonderful scene discovering forest high mountains waterfall clouds floating in an immense sky men on hilly paths birds in flight like that so you know what happened when the, he actually painted it and then on a wall when it was placed there was a screen or you can call it rather a curtain was covered over there so that only emperor could be, could uh, emperor could be able to see it properly and could have a fascination of what all this beautiful things have been painted in uh, on that painting were present on the painting by the painter so it was it has been written beautiful mountain forest a uh, floating clouds he just painted like in, uh, all the real things were there so emperor got really fascinated by that painting and then the painter said to the emperor this is a small story uh, the chapter starts with a small story so look sir said the painter in this cave at the foot of the mountain dwells a spirit so in the painting in the painting itself the painter is telling the emperor come on at the foot hills suppose we can say he draw he has drawn something like this the painter might have drawn we can assume it like that that might in the painting that painter had drawn something like uh, this like this beautiful mountains with uh, floating clouds with sun because all these things have been written and on the foothills of mountain there was a cave he says to the emperor and see the cave the uh, the painter wants that the emperor should focus on the cave and what he's telling in that mountain foot of the mountain dwells a spirit he's telling that there is a spirit also okay 
the painter clapped his hands and the entrance of the cave opened so what he did he actually showed the emperor that how his painting is so beautiful and what he did the painter actually while he was showing his painting to the emperor he showed that in my painting see the beautiful mountains the foothill of the mountain the cave is there and the painter actually clapped the hand and you know what happened the cave uh, the gates of the cave got opened okay in uh, in the painting itself and my goodness what happened you see the inside is splendid beyond anything words can convey please let me show your majesty the way the painter entered the way and the painter is describing your majesty beautiful things are inside the cave so i will tell you uh, what are the things uh, just let me go ahead and then you follow me and see what beautiful things are inside the cave he is explaining to the emperor how a person can enter in the cave in the painting it's not possible we all know but what happened the painter entered the way, cave, but the entrance closed behind him. Oh my God! In the painting, the painter, uh, the, while showing the uh, emperor his painting, the painter clapped his hand. He said to the emperor that, oh, beautiful things are there. Let me go ahead. Why he entered the gate, the close, the gate got closed. Means the painter who was in real terms standing along with the king, he entered the cave in the painting and then he was not there. Oh my god, it's something like jadu or magic we can call. Okay, and what happened? The uh, and before the astonished emperor could move and or utter a word, before this king who was actually standing and looking and was just having a word with this painter, the painter got inside the cave in the painting. What happened before our surprised king? He was so surprised and shocked he could say something. Before that, what happened? The painting had vanished from the wall. Oh my God, the place from where he has actually painted, the painting got vanished. Puri painting mit gai maha se. Okay. How it happened, nobody knows. Not a trace of Wu Daozi brush was left. And the artist was never seen again in the world. So this is one of the Chinese story we can call as. Means where the painter has drawn, Wu Daozi has drawn a beautiful painting to, on the palace wall. And while showing his painting, he actually he himself entered in the painting, one of the cave. And then he got disappeared. His painting got disappeared the entire wall seemed like there nobody has painted anything else before so such stories played an important part in china in china's classical education so this story of wow dowsy and this emperor zhuang song is one of the important stories of chinese uh, chi uh, Chinese education we can call and the book of Confucius and Zhuangzing are full of them and they have the master to guide his disciple in the right direction. Beyond the anecdote they are deeply revealing of the spirit in which art was considered. So my dear children beyond the stories means such stories are more prevalent in China and uh, such type of stories have some spiritual connection with them. Contrast this story or other famous one about a painter who wouldn't draw the eye of a dragon he had painted uh, for fear it would fly out of the painting with an old story from a native Flanders that I find most representative of the western painting. Okay, another uh, means another painter of actually there is a small uh, two line narration of another painter that another painter actually did not did not want to draw or paint a dragon because or an eye of a dragon because uh, who wouldn't draw the eye of a dragon means he had drawn the entire dragon but he does not want to eye, uh, draw the eye because the painter felt that this dragon may fly out of the painting so this was another story but some different stories are also there uh, in contrast to this Chinese story what are those 
Flanders, what is Flanders? Flanders is actually a medieval country in Western Europe. So, means European uh, stories are very much contrast to Chinese story. We have seen how a Chinese painter had a spiritual connection. In 15th century, Antwerp, Antwerp is a city in northern Belgium. A, plaster, a master blacksmith called Quinstein Mastin fell in love with painter's daughter. The father would not accept a son-in-law in such a profession. So Quentin sneaked into the painter's studio and painted a fly on his latest panel. With such a delicate realism that the master tried to swat it away before he realized that he had happened, that what had happened. Quentin was immediately admitted as an apprentice apprentice when straining into his studio. He married his beloved and went on to become one of the most famous painters of his age. These two stories illustrate that each form of art is trying to achieve a perfect illusionistic likeliness in Europe, the essence of inner life and spirit in Asia. So now another story is from a European country called as Belgium where one of the master blacksmith actually fall in love or rather fell in love. Uh, this master blacksmith name is Quentin. Okay, and he fell in love with the painter's daughter. So the painter would not accept a blacksmith as a son-in-law. So what happened, what this Quentin did, Quentin sneaked into the painter's studio he, and he painted a fly on his latest panel. Means that painter was actually painting something on the great drawing sheet or on the framework and uh, this blacksmith Quentin entered over there and he painted a fly just as real. Okay, very real. It means if, if anybody could enter uh, in that uh, area and you can believe means the painter also got deceived by that painting and he was about to like we do the fly now we also want to hit the fly so he also want to hit the fly or rather swat it in scratch the fly before he could realize oh my god the fly is a painting it is a painting of a fly not a real fly means such with uh, such a uh, realistic measure he has painted so finally uh, that the painter actually uh, uh, appreciated the work of this blacksmith. He made him his trainee and finally uh, this blacksmith uh, got married to the painter's daughter. So in these two stories we have seen that how there is similarity of illusionistic likeliness means uh, uh, illusion is created uh, that something is there which is actually not there like a uh, beautiful uh, landscape was drawn by the Chinese painter Wajazi and a fly was drawn by a blacksmith in the Belgium. Uh, this is two different stories from two different corners of the world. One is a Chinese story, one is a European story. Definitely the difference is the Chinese story has some spiritual connection as uh, we can see that uh, uh, the painter himself entered in the painting and he got disappeared which is something not possible else than in magical world or else than in supernatural world but in European story we find out that he actually draw have painted uh, that fly in such a realistic manner that it actually got an uh, the, the painter got an illusion of it so we can call that the European paintings are a figurative painting uh, and you can if you understand the figure you can understand no it is not like that it is just a painting but Chinese painting have a supernatural or you can call spiritual uh, connection with it so the the chapter start with these two different story and we progress in the chapter in the Chinese story the emperor commissions a painting and appreciates its outer appearance but the artist reveals to him the true meaning of his work. 
Okay, the emperor may rule over his territory he has conquered, but only the artist knows the way within. Let me show the way, the Tao, a word that means both the path or the method, and the mysterious works of the universe. The painting is gone, but the artist has reached his goal beyond any material appearance. So here the real meaning of Chinese story has been uh, told to you that Chinese painting, it is very difficult to understand. Okay, means from any point you can try to, there can be any parameters to see those Chinese painting as the emperor, maybe the emperor, he may rule over the kingdom, but he was not able to understand uh, the painting till the painter started making him to realize what is the painting but even after all the emperor was not able to understand the painting at all as the artist got disappeared so there is great difference in the chinese painting this chinese painting uh, you can uh, they want that people should look more carefully the painters of the chinese painting want that you actually deal the painting from different parameters and analyze it and from any corner of the painting you can start and go into the theme of understanding the painting. A classical Chinese landscape is not meant to reproduce an actual view as would a western figurative painting means that is not an actual view we, you can call because uh, in the Belgium story what we saw that the actual fly, the fly was not actual, but it was painted as very actual manner, in a very real manner. Okay, so it was that much only. The concept behind it was, the thing was painted with a realistic measure. No hidden truths were there. Okay, no, uh, we can call no other related facts. Whereas in Chinese painting, we don't know what all facts are related to it. So, whereas a European painter wants you to borrow his eyes and look at a particular landscape exactly as he saw it from a specific an angle, whereas a Chinese painter does not choose a single viewpoint. The difference here is explained that a uh, European painter has a specific angle, means the fly is there, it is appearing real, but later on you will realize it is not real, it has drawn or painted in a very realistic manner. That is a specific angle of European painters. But Chinese painter, they do not have a specific angle. They want that you keep on trying and try to get a resolve, you just try to resolve the mystery. His landscape is not a real one and you can enter it from any point and travel in it. The artist creates a path for your eyes to travel up and down then back again in a leisure movement. This is even more true in the case of horizontal scroll in which the action of slowly opening one section of the painting then rolling it up to move on to the other adds a dimension of time which is unknown in any other form of painting okay it also requires the active participation of the viewer who decides at what pace he will travel through the painting so the chinese paintings to understand a chinese painting it is much more difficult as it does not have one specific angle to look on they are they are also not real paintings but again it is just like you are scrolling your screen up and down moving your uh, cursor here and there and the Chinese painters want that the viewer or who is actually viewing the painting should have a overall actually very alert uh, we can call stimuli so that he can uh, the viewer can draw almost all the conclusions for the painting though it is not real. A participation which is a physical as well as mental. The Chinese painter does not want you to borrow his eyes. He wants you to enter his mind. Means uh, European painters want that jo humne draw kiya hai wahi viewer dekhe. Like he has drawn a fly. So it was not a real fly but he, draw, he has painted like a real one. At last the main painter actually uh, recognized that it is uh, not a real fly, a fly which is painted in the painting. That uh, the western painters actually want that whatever they have drawn, you just 
look towards it but the chinese painter wants that the viewers should actually go should actually brush their minds also what is there in the painting the landscape is an inner one a spiritual and conceptual conceptual space means chinese painters want to believe the viewers what that all those things which are present in the ideas the viewer should think that they, that things are real conceptual means the things which are once present in our or which really exist in our ideas but they do not exist in the real terms or in physical exist level or existence level okay so our uh, the chinese painter wants to walk in the mind of the viewers whereas the european painters want that you should uh, their the viewer should borrow their eyes and look on the painting now moving to the next page that is page number 36 this concept is expressed as san shui literally mountain water so this is something you can find it little bit strange but another concept has been explained san shui okay this is again based on one of the chinese philosophy i'm writing out writing here on the board means san shui means mountain water shan shu it means this means mountain and water and you know first i will read out to you and then i will explain you so let us read this paragraph and then i will explain you through this chart okay what this means so the concept is expressed as san shui literally means mountain water which used together represent the word landscape means this has been used for the word landscape more then two elements of an image this represent two complementary poles reflecting the daoist view of universe so uh, daoist view means it is a philosophy a chinese philosophy the shan shui is based on d a o i s t daoist i think it is a chinese philosophy and what is there according to this chinese philosophy what is there according to this chinese philosophy it means there are two elements in shan shui mountain and water okay we will first read and then i will explain the mountain is yang mountain is yang or male version water they have reflected as i think yin as a female version and this mountain they actually like this they treat it i will explain you first we will treat it the mountain is yang reaching vertically up towards heaven stable warm and drying the sun okay so it is stable warm and dry in sun while the water is in horizontal and uh, horizontal and resting on the earth fluid moist and cool resting on earth fluid moist and cool okay the interaction of we of yin the receptive female feminine aspect of universal energy and its counterpart yang active and masculine is of course the fundamental notion of doism what is often overlooked is an essential third element middle void i will explain you don't get it don't get hyper it's little bit weird for you but once explanation will be there you will able to know 
middle void where there is interaction where the interaction take place this can be compared with the yogic practice of pranayam breathe in retain breathe out okay breathe in retain breathe out the suspension the suspension of the breath is the void where meditation occurs the middle void is essential nothing can happen without it hence the importance of white unpainted space in chinese landscape this is also where man finds a fundamental role in the space between heaven and earth he becomes the conduct 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 means channel. Conduct here means channel. C O N D U T S means channel or tube of communication between the both poles of universe. His presence is essential, even if it's only suggested far from being lost or oppressed by lofty peaks. He is in Fregorius Chang's wonderful expression, the eye of the landscape. So this particular thing has been extracted from Landscape of the Soul, Ethics and Spirituality in Chinese painting, slightly edited. So now I will be telling you that this San Shui is based on the philosophy of Chinese scholars Taoist. In this philosophy, what the Chinese people consider is that the universe has two different poles. One is called as Shan, another is Shu, or rather the Shan Shui means mountain on or water. Sorry, mountain and water. Mountain has been considered as a male part, which is also called as Yang. Water has been called as Yin and also as a female. Means the universal earth is made up of two factors mountain and water mountain is in vertical direction while as water has been considered in horizontal direction mountain has been actually taken as a symbol of stable or stability warmth and dry in sun okay very very highly masculine character and then Yin or water has been treated as a horizontal part of the universe and it is resting on the earth very much fluid, moist and cool. So the male part has been called as mountain going towards the heaven and the other one water which is the female aspect according to this Chinese theory is actually on the earth. So one is the heaven going towards the heaven another is resting on the earth and between these two poles of heaven and earth there is a vacant or an empty space called as middle void and this is very very important space according to this chinese theory of philosophy where the you can call the interaction of heaven and earth take place and in this uh, interaction who has a very important role? Man has a very important role. Man existence actually lie here in this middle void. This is all according to Chinese theory. I hope you understand this thing. Even though I will repeat in a very simplified manner that this chapter also talks all about a Chinese philosophy called as Taoist. Okay, and according to this uh, this philosophy, there has been a term coined as San Shui, and the San Shui is made up of mountain and water, and this mountain and water are actually considered as the two poles of this universe. Mountain has been taken as the main element called as Yang, and water has been called as a female element, and it has been called as yin. And according to this Chinese philosophy, mountains are approaching towards the heaven. They are very much stable. They are very much warm. And they are vertically moving upwards. While as this water, which is a female aspect of the universe, is resting on the earth. Uh, it is fluid. It is very much moist and cool. 
and the place where the interaction of these two elements occur is in the space called as middle void which is also known as an empty space but this space has its own importance as the existence of man lies in this space okay so this is all the ancient theories of whatever we call as art now the next part of the chapter is getting inside outsider art okay in this part of the chapter there it has been uh, till now we have seen all the skilled artist means all those artists who were actually well trained in their art forms like chinese artists or european painters who were really because they were actually drawing or painting something very of realistic or delicate realism things were which were creating illusion but if we see here in this part of the chapter what we find is we find that this part of the chapter deals with all those artists which belong to the modern world these artists do not have received, they don't have any formal training in their art field yet they have created a great you know name with their creativity in this field of art what we see when french painter jean dufer mooted the concept of art brut this art brut is what concept that is no formal training has been received by the artist he is totally in his imaginativity way or in his creativity is doing a new piece of art so this art brute word has been coined in 1940s the art of untrained visionary was of minority interest means all those artists who were not trained but still they have done a great splendid work from its almost wild beginnings outsider art has gradually become the fastest growing area of interest in the contemporary art internationally but this type of art which is called as art brute or outsider art is now flourishing in the modern world this genre is described as the art of those who have no right to be artists as they have received no formal training yet show talent and artistic insight means this such means all those artists which are falling in or falling in this category actually they are not supposed to be called as artists because they have not received any formal training in that particular field but yet they if you see or look on their work they are great okay their works are stimulating contrast to a lot of mainstream offering means it, their work if you see means oh my god wow what is this work is around the time duffet was propounding his concept means when duffet this man was actually cons uh, was working on this theory of this art brut means there can be artists who have not received formal training in their field of art yet they can prove to be a great actor like contemporary fields are there a lot of creativity a person can be a artist when he was propounding this theory what was happening in in india a great artist was actually giving shape to his artwork who has not received a formal training in india an untutored genius was creating paradise years ago the little patch of jungle that he had began clearing to make himself a garden sculpted with a stone recycled material is known to the world today as the rock garden and chandigarh and here there has been description about such an art brut artist means artist who has not received any formal training yet he created a great piece of art which we today called as rock garden in chandigarh by nature and this is an indian artist so the word of this art brute was the word art brute was coined by in the foreign land or rather foreigners uh, brought this idea out that the people who have not received any formal training in the field of art can prove can they can be they can be proved or they can become a great artist in india at 
एट दैट टाइम वन आर्टिस्ट ऑलरेडी हैड प्रूव हिस्स टैलेंट बाय क्रिएटिंग रॉक गार्डन इफ यू डोंट नो अबाउट रॉक गार्डन काइंडली सर्च आई विल इन द इंटरनेट बट आई एम टेलिंग यू व्हाट इज रॉक गार्डन ऑल अबाउट इट इज अ ब्यूटिफुल गार्डन एंड ऑल द स्कल्पचर पीसेस ओवर देयर आर मेड फ्रॉम द रॉक्स और रिसाइकल मटेरियल्स लाइक पीसेस ऑफ ग्लासेस बैंगल्स प्लास्टिक्स समथिंग लाइक दैट एंड ऑल द यूज मटेरियल्स आर यूज एंड इट्स अ ब्यूटिफुल गार्डन व्हिच यू कैन विजिट इन चंडीगढ़ सो नेचन हु हैज एक्चुअली द मास्टरमाइंड बिहाइंड दिस गार्डन हैज एक्चुअली नेवर रिसीव्ड any any formal training in such type of art because there was no art like rock garden it is his own imagination which he actually given a form of rock garden so it's great it's 80 year old creator director nickchen is now hailed as india's biggest contributor to outsider art the 50th issue spring 2005 of rock vision a uk based magazine pioneer in outsider art publication featured nature and his rock garden sculpture women by the waterfall on its anniversary issue cover so his rock garden made the rock garden made by nature was on the on the you can call magazine had made that uh, the piece of a uh, uh, rock garden photo on its front page of the magazine a uk based magazine on its anniversary issue we can call it what a great achievement by an indian artist such artists can born anywhere in the world not only in foreign but in india and that is nature is the greatest example he created a beautiful garden out of the used materials the notion of art brought or raw art was of work that were in their raw state as regards cultural and artistic influences anything and everything from a tin to a sink to a broken down car could be a material for a work of art something nature has taken to dizzying heights so art brought is not only done by the people who are actually have no formal training but they use all those elements which we think are useless or we can call it as a used material or unused things item and from that they can have their creativity and imaginativity sorry imaginative sorry imagination drawn in a beautiful piece of art here we see we are concluding the chapter recognizing his art as an outstanding testimony of difference a single man can make when he lives his dream the swiss commission for unesco will be honoring him by a way of european exposition of his work the five month interactive show realm of nature beginning october will be held at leading museums of switzerland belgium france and italy the biggest reward is walking through the garden and seeing people in charm and creation nickchen says so my goodness nickchen or nickchen and his work of rock garden a beautiful uh, you can call episodes of uh, documentation or documentary has been made which has actually been not only started in foreign on foreign land but uh mu it will be on the leading museum of switzerland belgium france and italy on the european so an indian man without any formal training just uh, he gave uh, he can call his creativity and imagination a great piece of art shaped its creativity and imagination and formed art and nature himself coin that it's beautiful to see that people walk through the garden and appreciate my work and when they you means he wants to say if you really want to appreciate my work definitely go and visit the rock garden so the chapter concludes here uh, with this chapter with this part of nature about rock garden and this chapter definitely tells us there are two things one is about the ancient art and one of the uh, one point is of the modern art ancient we have seen that how the two different stories were actually narrated to us what uh, chinese and bel uh, european uh, story in which we find that there is a difference in chinese painting and european painting as chinese painting have a spiritual connection whereas this 
uh, European paintings are of more realistic one. Okay. R and next we see, we have seen in this chapter about sensual concept and then we have seen about art brute that is people who are not professionally trained in the field of art. Now your homework assignment is page number 38 understanding the text. Okay. So your homework will be page number 38. This is your homework. Okay. Understanding the text. The first question Contrast the Chinese view of art with the European view. With that example, you are able to do it very nicely. How Chinese painters walk, want to walk with your mind. Walk, walk, uh, want that the viewers should actually be actively involved. And how they have spiritual connection. Whereas European viewers, uh, European paintings are more of uh, delicate realism. That way you can explain. Explain the concept of Sancho. We have already gone through it very nicely. You can explain it. What do you understand by term outsider art and art brute or raw art? Again, I have told you that those people who are actually not having formal training in that particular field of art, yet through their creativity and imagination, they are able to do the beautiful work of art that is called as art brute. Who was the untutored genius? Who created a paradise and what is the nature of his contribution to art? Like nature, you have to elaborate that rock garden, particularly his rock garden he created. Okay, you have to elaborate the answer. So my dear children, here we come to the end of our chapter and uh, another video will be also along with this in which we will be dealing the other part. This chapter has two parts. One is this landscape of the soul and another is the poetry, the voice of the rain, which we will be doing in the next video. So thank you for watching the video. Have a nice day. Bye bye.